Think about it. Raise your hand. All right, let's go ahead and get started. You're curving the old time. Let me uh, start off with uh, 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 Jack gave me a, an article in the paper, the, uh, his paper this morning, and it's got a good quote here that just uh, emphasizes. What I emphasize all the time is that we aren't past serving the Lord. You know, there's not an age. You don't 62 retire from your job and, and retire from service to God's kingdom. And, uh, so, you know, and, and we fall into that trap mentally. But here's the quote out of the paper. The Lord has places for us to be and people to meet each day. It may come as part of our everyday routine or it may happen as the Holy Spirit nudges us in some unusual direction. We need to be seeking His guidance, receptive to His leading, and this is most important, expecting opportunities and ready to walk through the door he, uh, doors He opens for us. <laughs> we just need to be ready, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may be a phone call. It may be somebody you talk to at the uh, at the grocery store. Just anywhere, anywhere, everywhere. And there are lots of people. You know, you minister to someone. Exactly right. I mean, this is not about me, but I do have people every now and then say, "You said something. You did something," mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, I have no idea. And we all in that same situation. So. So just keep that in mind. A lot of, not a lot of things, but a lot of people. Let me just get the things out of the way. Uh, the grief share is ongoing. It started. Uh, you know, if you, if, if it's something you need to avail yourself of, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, uh, you can come with them. Uh, you can, uh, you know, just get involved in grief share if that's if that's what's need to be done. Uh, again, the spring event for the ladies that's uh, on the 27th and it's 80 bucks. So that's, you've got to keep that in mind. Uh, again, at the family mission trip, if you know, if you have a grandchild, uh, a, a niece, a nephew, a neighbor's kid that you'd like to uh, participate in this with, or you have somebody that you that might want to participate in this, uh, contact uh, either Larry Wilburn or Barry Kincaid or me and let, you know, See if that's something you might be interested in. It is great for the kids, great for the adults. Uh, it goes from June 30th to July the 4th. Uh, the Salt Life is the 18th. Uh, it starts at 12 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, you know, just call and let them know you're coming so they'll know how much to prepare for, and it costs five bucks. Salt singers are coming. Yeah, there were some singers, I forgot. Joyful singers. Joyful singers from Hunter Street Church over in, near Birmingham. So that's the uh, that's the uh, event stuff. Uh, Martha's got uh, envelopes over here for anybody that uh, wants to participate in gift cards for the fire department to give out. It's not for the firemen themselves. Um, I'll start off with Debbie. Debbie, okay? De De yeah, she's got a bad cold. Okay. Which none of you want. Yep. And then uh, while you've got the floor, your mama. Uh, my mom is uh, still at Jonesboro Rehab. Uh, progress is slow. slow. Yeah. Uh, we're a little concerned now that the, uh, you know, usually that's a that's about a 20 day stay and she's on 14 days and she ain't nowhere near ready to come home. Mm -hmm. How's your dad doing with it? Uh, uh, he physically fine. Uh, it's wearing him out a little bit, uh, but uh, uh, he's not ready to accept that she's not ready to come home. Mm -hmm. That's our part for him. Before we get to the the, the sick and injured, uh, we got Joel back. 
It's great to have Joel here this morning. He's not sick and injured. Well, thank y'all so much for the cards, wheels. Man, touch my heart. Even even a friend said, uh, "Are you okay? You need to come outside so I can put eyes on you. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're okay and just to talk." So thank y'all so much. And tell us about you. Give us an update on Carol. Carol is Carol is getting better, progressing well. Just needs to keep one foot in front of the other. If uh, her eye, we go back in about a, less than a month, yeah. start to see what we can do about getting an eye where it looks like an eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you told me yesterday she's uh, able to move around good on her walker and uh, feels yes. comfortable. Yes. She, yeah. She's feeling confident in that. So, yay for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we go feel for you over there. Thank you. It's good to have David Hill to back. I called him yesterday also and uh, talked with David and heard somebody grumbling in the background. So I said that was David. And uh, we're just glad y'all are feeling well enough to be here this morning. Um, give us about John. Uh, uh, on him. In my opinion, he had a much better week this week. Uh, he's extremely weak. Um, that's just normal. He's going to stay that way until it's over with, I'm sure. Um, but his outlook and everything, thanks to the meds, they increased them. Uh, after I begged for help, uh, <laughs> they increased them and they finally kicked in and he's not come bad as like he was. He's himself and it's great to feel like my husband was back, yeah. you know, uh, even though he's extremely weak. Um, so. He, he is eating a little better, um, so I was uh, very happy to see that. Um, he's doing more what I asked him to do, you know, without fighting and on it. And everything. So he's doing much better. I got him out a little bit yesterday and um, give him some fresh air and sunshine and everything. And so I think that was good for him. He said he had a good day. Uh, he doesn't think he's doing well, you know, this week, but I can see a difference yeah. in him. Yeah, we'll so I, I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, he's already dreading tomorrow's treatment. <laughs> you know? oh, he said to tell everybody hello, though. So he doesn't have much of his hair left, but, you know. That's flies to some of a lot of us, so uh, yeah. we don't have our hair left. So. Yeah, he didn't have much to begin with, but that <laughs> And John and Carrie's uh, anniversary is uh, Tuesday week, so keep those, them, them in your prayer. Uh, for those of us that have been around here a little while, John and Wanda Dunn, former members, uh, John fell in a hole at the dump. Oh. Uh, pretty serious fall. He's in Grady. Uh, oh. Fortunately, he didn't hit his head, and but he had broken ribs, some yeah. situation with his back. Hopes to go home in a day or two. Uh, they're hoping he goes home Monday. Monday. Um, I did find out, look, I have some notes here that Wanda gave me yesterday. He, the, the biggest pain thing that he has is a fractured kneecap. Mm -hmm. And he has a brace to keep his leg straight. He can't, he can't bend it. And so that is one of the most painful things that he has. And then he's got three cracked, cracked ribs, which is very painful. And then spinal flares. It's, it's the wings, you know, it's the yeah. wings on your, uh, I don't call them, yeah. anyway, uh, they're broke. Yeah. And, um, but they, all of that should heal up and no, no operations needed. Good. And um, so they're, they're ready to come home. Yeah, they were here, uh, the Good Friday service, so I was able to yeah. see them, talk with them yes. on the end. Yeah. yeah. It was about a six or seven foot fall he made. Yeah, yeah so it was. It could have been a lot worse. Oh, it could have been a lot worse. Get planned on funerals. Cherry Webb, uh, they did the uh, operation on her aorta, maybe whatever it was. They had the valve. They had to go in there. Uh, her heart did stop while they were doing it, but they had that machine that keeps it going, going. Uh, she came through that okay, but uh, has a blood clot in her leg that they're uh, worried about um, to the point that uh, they're, you know, it's potential they could have to remove her leg. 
So continue to keep Carrie, Wendell, and all the family in your prayers. Um, she was back in surgery yesterday morning. Okay. Yeah. From this a blood is, clot. This is from heart. this is from Wendell yesterday morning. Carrie's not doing well. She's not stable. They're getting ready to operate again. They helped the right side of her heart this time. There's a good chance she'll lose her right leg, but right now it's secondary as they try to stabilize her heart and pressure. So that's that's the latest that I have. All right. So certainly, certainly, certainly keep them in mind. Um, we, we talked about Sandra Causey last week. Uh, several people in here knew her. Uh, her obituary is in the paper this morning. I just happened to read it. So uh, uh, just keep the Causey family in. I talked, uh, communicated with Phil McMullen <laughs> this week, and uh, he's saying now it looks like he's going to be down there into June. So we, we was hoping to May, but now it's June. But they're doing well. Everything's going well. And uh, just keep filling you in your prayers. Uh, I've got David and Hilda here. I talked with them yesterday. Talked with Joel yesterday. Talked with Terry yesterday. Um, the uh, uh, hospice group that they're involved with uh, came and got him on Monday and took him to the hospice care home uh, to give her a week for her to recover. You know, I mean, it's 24-7 with her. And so uh, uh, so she's had, she was having a good week. Uh, she had a good week, you know, able to rest and relax, uh, mentally get back on focus. Uh, and he, they were bringing him home yesterday afternoon. I talked to her about noon, and uh, he hadn't gotten there yet. So uh, they were bringing him back. Her biggest thing was she was working on her funeral, on the funeral. You know, I mean, I guess the good part, the bad part is if she's having to do it, the good part is she's not in any kind of denial. She knows. I mean, every time I talk with her, uh, you know, she realizes the end is coming. And, and so she had a lot of questions. So I referred her to talk with uh, Alan, Alan or Rhonda about arrangements and everything. So she's going to follow up with that. So just, you know, obviously keep her in the prayer. And again, if, you, if you're a card sender or a phone caller, call her or send her a card. I talked with Marshall this week, and uh, he's you know doing the same. Uh, there's a gentleman here in the church that uh, he's uh, uh, in contact with who's uh, agreed to start picking him up and bring him when he's available, when he can, when both of them can, when it works out. So that's what he is uh, hoping. Uh, you know, to do get back here in the next week or so. And I guess finally for me, um, uh, obviously not a secret since they told me, but, uh, you know, I, the, the youth pastor we've been praying about and they'd had a lot of things. And, and for me, everything kind of went silent. I thought, well, maybe something went bad. So I was talking with uh, Lanny and uh, Kirby and uh, they have made the offer. The person is accepted. Uh, they're going to tell the youth this Wednesday night, and then they'll let the church know. So we do have a youth pastor. For us, it may not sound important, but for First Baptist Jonesboro's existence, that is as important as any position in this church. If, if this is First Baptist Jonesboro, it's a dead church. We are, we are, you know, 20 years from now, there's not going to be any of us in here mm -hmm. other than visitors. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> We've got to get youth in there, you know. We used to look up on stage, there'd be 200 youth singing when they had a singing time. And now there's a couple of dozen. So, you know, that, I cannot emphasize how important it is. You know, last week, uh, people gave me prayer requests in Easter, and I got hung up on Easter, which is not a bad thing, but I, I, I didn't pray for anything that anybody uh, gave me last week. And I apologize for that. I thought about it afterwards and didn't want to say anything. And I keep my notes, and I was looking at them this morning and uh, realized again that I didn't pray. So I apologize for that, and uh, Jimmy, God knew what you would have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my only. Yeah, that's my only salvation there. That's for sure. So, any anything? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, uh, my niece Hannah Brooks. Uh, she had surgery. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. It was eight hour surgery. Mm -hmm. She has a tooth. She had a tumor in her neck. 
and they removed it, but now they've got to do another surgery, and they don't know if it's going to be within a month, two months, but she has neurofibromatosis, if you know what that is. And she <laughs> has going to have tumors kind of all over her yeah. body since she's been very little. So it's something she kind of battles, but um, hopefully this, this is... How old is she? Anna's probably Roughly. 22. Oh, 22. Wow. Yeah. And where did she live? In Texas. <clears throat> Texas. Okay. Well, how sad, sad, sad. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, somebody gave me a prayer request. It was about a... Oh, um, Case, uh, there's some kind of kin. Uh, he's he's a, a Major League Baseball umpire, and they've been down in Florida prior to the season opening. And they have a son that's about four or five, and he's got, he got some kind of <laughs> DK here. Um Something, something, it was just, it just, everything went amazingly wrong with him. He did. And, uh, you know, he's at the point of death, you know, just from some kind of illness that people get that, you know, that little kids get that, you know, 98% of them just, they take a little medicine, they get it and they fly through and you never hurt anything. And that 2%, you know, it, it goes in the wrong direction. And, uh, you know, it just, it was bad. I apologize for not knowing any more than that. Uh, just, yeah, she was telling me just about that. So, uh, a, lot, a lot of things going on out there. A lot of, a lot of people, a lot of, every, every one of us. We all have unspoken. We all got prayer requests in our, for ourselves, for our families, uh, for all that's going on. Uh, anything else before we open the prayer? I never get through all the time. And I apologize for that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, again, it's good to be in your house today. To leave the, we come in here and we shut that door and leave the, the, the cares and the woes of the world behind us. We can come in here and to lift up your name and to uh, fellowship and celebrate with one with another. But Lord, uh, sometimes our broken hearts come in here with us. Uh, we have wives that have gone through trauma. We've had husbands who've gone through trauma. We've had children. We've had parents. We've had friends. We've had neighbors. We've had work people that uh, that uh, we're in we're in prayer needs about. Our church has prayer needs. We as individuals have prayer needs, and so Lord, we gather here as believers to to lift all these prayers up to you. Lord, for all those that are on our prayer list, uh, we're certainly praying for them. We, as we casually look over, uh, look over them during the week, and a name pops out at us, and we'll pray for them. And that's that's good. That's what we need to be doing. Lord, we're certainly praying for John and his treatment tomorrow and his long-term uh, outcome. Lord, that everything will be well. And this time next year, we'll look back and say, wow, it's been a year and everything's well. And that's what we're looking forward to. Same with Carol, uh, that they get that eye situation like they want it and, uh, and that uh, she does the best that she can for Kirby's mom and uh, uh, all that she's going through, all the family's going through, Lord, that uh, things will work out there for Hannah. Now we're talking a young person that's got so many problems with this, these cancerous tumors in her body. Uh, Lord, so our prayers are for her and the doctors and all those that are attending to her, that there, there will be an answer for her. But we do have the, the best answer, the greatest answer, and that's our trust in you. And no matter what this life throws at us, we know where our eternity stands, and that's in heaven on uh, at, at the feet of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord, it is good news about our youth pastor, and uh, we are so, so forward, looking forward to that and uh, getting the youth cranked back up and moving in the right direction and uh, enthusiasm and, and numbers and just everything that will move First Baptist forward as the years go by. 
And then, Lord, what I, I read uh, to start off with the class, the opportunities you give us in life. It could be getting our oil changed, being at the grocery store, talking with our neighbor, a phone call, whatever. Lord, we will know when a, a divine opportunity is in front of us. And then it's our option whether to ignore it or to act upon it takes no courage to ignore it. We can ignore it and go about, about our business and uh, just forget about it and just hope for the best. Say, well, hope, hope somebody else comes into your life and, and tells you the goodness of Jesus Christ. But it does take courage to, to talk to, to, to strangers, to individuals, to, to folks out there in this world. And Lord, give us that courage. Allow us to be servants for you here on earth. Lord, each and every person in this room loves you to the fullest. I have no doubt about that. Uh, we, we, we're grateful for all that you do. We, we remember those that can't be here uh, through, other, through circumstances that's beyond their control. And we'll continue to think about them, love them, and lift them up and, and help them when we can. Lord, I do pray for the services uh, that uh, are following. Be with uh, the speaker and that uh, a clear, concise message will be heard today. We're always grateful for Kirby and all that he gives to the class. And we pray for him, lift him up, and looking forward to what you have placed upon his heart today. Uh, Lord, looking forward to a good day, a good week gathering back here next week uh, to see what good things you've done in, in the people of this class. And all these things we ask in our precious name, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, Jimmy, you didn't tell us why Kay's not here. Oh, well, uh, she's, uh, uh, they call her and ask her to come work in the nursery. Oh. Yeah. I'll be gone for a couple of weeks, so either Carrie or Kay will be heading up the church up the class for the next few weeks. And then, uh, for now, did you trade Tom in for two young I did. Ago? <laughs> you got a good deal. Yes, did. <laughs> now, this Which, is our granddaughter, Emily, and her boyfriend, Gentry. Welcome. Glad to have you all with us. Too. If, if you haven't already noticed, we spend a lot of time talking about hospitals and funerals. And if you hang around after the class, we'll tell you about our doctors. <laughs> Amen. I, I wanted to ask Harry, did, did I get the name of that medication that makes John do what you want him to do? <laughs> Jimmy, I'm glad, I'm glad that you were the one who mentioned that we may not all be here 20 years from now. Because as I was preparing for this lesson, I, I keep these little notes that I make. And so I looked back, and it was the Sunday after Easter, 2022, when we started 1 Samuel. So the way I calculate, it took us two years to cover two kings, and now in 1 and 2 Kings, we're going to cover 41. So, 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 so some of us may not get to the end of 1 and 2 Kings. Now, hopefully we'll travel a little faster than that. Let me, uh, let me first of all kind of start. We're just going to, today is just to set the groundwork for what our study of First and Second Kings are going to be. And, and I want to start that by asking a rhetorical question that there is an answer to, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about the answer at the end of the lesson. Is any, the rhetorical question is, what does tomorrow's solar eclipse have to do with First and Second Kings in the Bible? If anybody figures that out, feel free to, 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 to volunteer your answer. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more at the end. I'm going to test your knowledge of First and Second Samuel. Why is there a First and Second Kings? Because it was so long, they divided it. Exactly. Exactly. It's really one book. In the original 
Hebrew. Uh, it, it was one book, as was Samuel, as was Chronicles. But when they translated the Hebrew into Greek, the Septuagint, Hebrew has no vowels in the written language. So Greek takes about a third again as many characters as Hebrew does. So it became too big to fit on one scroll. And so they broke it into 1 Kings and 2 Kings. Uh, there's no particular rhyme or reason. In other words, they didn't break it at a particular point because of some significant historical event. They just ran out of room on the scroll, and so it became second king. As a matter of fact, in, in modern Hebrew Bibles, uh, you actually have uh, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth kings, or books of kings, which is first and second Samuel, first and second kings, and first and second chronicles, because those are the historical books of the nation of Israel and the kings of Israel. First and second kings covers a period from about 970 BC up to 586 BC, which is the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonian Empire. Uh, the author is not known. Uh, we, don't, we really can't attribute it to an individual. We do believe, most scholars believe, that it was written by one person. Uh, they believe that it was probably written somewhere between 561 B.C. and 538 B.C., uh, it was written during the time of the Babylonian exile. Babylonian exile being the point at which the, which the Babylonians had conquered the people of Israel. They had uh, destroyed Jerusalem and they took them back captive. You remember Daniel and all of that. Uh, uh, during that period of time, uh, <coughs> Now, there, there is some dispute. You believe that there's disputes about the Bible. Uh, there's some dispute about the, the dating of it because the, the, the author, the writer of First uh, and Second Kings, uh, refers to certain historical events and, and uses the phrase, to this day. And, and if you date it, as we generally do that time of between 561 and 538 BC, it wouldn't have been to that day. Those events would have already occurred or, or transpired and, and, and it, you wouldn't use that. But, but, but most biblical scholars believe that uh, that is actually the author quoting other sources that the author used. Obviously, if the author is writing it in the 500 BC, 561 to 538, and he's writing about things that happened in 970 BC, he's not writing from firsthand experience. He's, uh, he's writing from other documents, chronicles, often uh, what's called chronicles of, of the kings those records that were kept by the kings or by the king's court uh, during the period of their reign. Uh, I said earlier that, that we're going to cover about 41 kings. Uh, we're going to pick up with the end of the life of David, and then we're going to pick up with the reign of Solomon, and, and those two together... Uh, take up probably about a fourth to a third of the two books. And then we're going to see that at the end of the reign of Solomon, the country of Israel divides again. And we have the northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. We have Israel, we have Judah. And so the uh, book of, of Kings, first and second Kings, 
tracks the reign. It's a history of the reign of the various kings of the two different kingdoms. And, and uh, it follows a, uh, a fairly uh, straightforward format. There, there's an introduction to each king. And in that introduction, it'll give you the name and the relationship of that king to the predecessor. Was, was that king the son of the former king or what that relationship was? Uh, it'll give you the date of the ascension. When did that king take the throne? Uh, in, and, and when did he take the throne in relationship to the reign of the king in the other kingdom? It'll give you the king's age at the time of ascension, but only for the kings in Judah. It doesn't give you the age of the kings when they assume the throne in Israel. We'll circle back to that curiosity. Uh, it'll tell you the length of the reign. It'll tell you the place of the reign. It'll tell you the mother's name of the kings in Judah, but not the kings in Israel. Uh, and it will give a spiritual appraisal of the reign of that king. And then it'll give you a narrative of what transpired, what, what events occurred, significant events during the reign of that king. And then it'll give you a, uh, a conclusion in which the author will uh, tell you what sources he relied upon in, in compiling that. It'll give you uh, uh, any additional historical notes or information that the author felt was important about that king or that king's reign. Then it'll tell you about a notice of his death, a notice of his burial. It'll give you the name of his successor. And then sometimes there'll be a little postscript uh, uh, commentary about that particular king's reign. Uh, there's some challenges in, in interpretation of kings when it comes to dating. And I'm gonna, I want to hold that because I kind of, we'll, we'll come back to that at the, at the end. The, the dating of when it was written, the dating of the reigns of the kings for the most part is pretty accurate. And, uh, and, and we'll talk about how we know that accuracy, and, and, but then we'll talk about where the conflict comes up. The, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was a little bit about not just this history of the kings, because the writer of First and Second Kings doesn't write from a political standpoint doesn't write from an economic standpoint, doesn't write from a sociological standpoint. In other words, Kings isn't going to tell you what the economy of, uh, of, of Israel or Judah was at the time. It's not going to tell you much about, other than telling you who the kings were, it's not going to tell you much about the politics, it's not going to tell you much about the society. Most historical writers focus on those three Components. If I'm going to, if if I'm writing a history of some country, I'm going to tell you what the politics was, what the economy was, and what society was like. Very little of that in Kings. Kings has a totally different focus. Kings is all about the relationship between the kings and the people of Israel and God. Now, there are generally eight recognized covenants between God and man or men because some of those are unique to specific people. Uh, out of those, there are five covenants that establish the relationship between God and man. Uh, the the and, and of those five, four of them are unconditional, meaning that there's nothing that we do or can do that impairs the covenant relationship between God and man. 
and then there is one that is conditional. The, as, to, to try to cover quickly all eight of them, the, the, the first obviously is God's covenant with Adam. Uh, that uh, you can live in paradise. Now, of the eight, there are two conditional. This is the first conditional one. You can live in paradise what? As long as you don't eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. That covenant doesn't exist anymore. That covenant was broken because Adam couldn't keep the covenant. Uh, there was a later covenant uh, with Noah. What, what was God's covenant with Noah? I will never destroy the earth by flood again, and the sign of that covenant is a rainbow. And 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 but with that. Noah was to go and populate the world. That's an unconditional covenant. Nothing Noah did, nothing you do, none of us are going to change God's covenant that he'll never destroy the earth by flood again. And then later we see of the first of the five covenants, which is, which is God's covenant with Abraham. And God's covenant with Abraham is that from you will come a great nation and from you will come, it, 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 it's not worded this way, but the sense is from you will come the Messiah. That I, one from your lineage. That is an unconditional covenant. Wasn't predicated on Abraham. Wasn't predicated on Abraham's righteousness wasn't predicated on anything Abraham was to do, but that was God's covenant with Abraham. And then after that, we have the Mosaic or the Sinai covenant, the Ten Commandments. Now this is a conditional covenant because God says to Moses that here are my commandments and keep my commandments and you will prosper. Keep my commandments and you will be blessed. If you don't keep my commandments, then you will be cursed. Now, that is important as you read through Kings because there are two of those five covenants that are constant throughout the book of Kings and the first of those is that conditional Mosaic or Sinai covenant. So long as the kings and the people of Israel obeyed and kept God's law, they would prosper. But when they didn't, then things were going to turn bad. And they turned bad in the way of Egypt. And they turned bad in the way of Syria. And they turned bad in the way of Assyria. And they turned bad in the way of Babylonia. Because these were kingdoms that during this period from 970 to, to, five, uh, to, to 539 B.C. were, except for a 50-year period of time, constantly at war with the people of Israel. And they were losing. To the extent that they were overrun by the Assyrians, they were overrun by the Babylonians. They were taken captive. So, so it is an explanation. In fact, much of this was written as an explanation to the people in exile in Babylonia. Of, Here's why you're in exile. Here's what's happened that has caused this and caused you to be where you are Today. So as we read through the book of Kings, it's important to keep in mind that that Mosaic or Sinai covenant that here's my law, obey my law, and you will be blessed. Ignore my law, and bad things are going to happen. Now, the third of those five covenants is the, is the covenant of the land. 
uh, God later tells Moses and Joshua that they are to go in and occupy the land that we call Canaan, some refer to as Palestine, uh, but that land that God is giving to uh, the people of Israel. And once again, that is an unconditional covenant. It's not conditioned on their performance. It's not conditioned on Israel obeying. Now, they may be removed from the land, but they will return to the land because God's covenant doesn't require, covenant for the land doesn't require that they do anything other than to go in initially and occupy the land. The fourth covenant is the Davidic covenant, the covenant with David. What was, what was God's covenant with David? Come out of his yeah. That your reign will never end, yeah. meaning that there will be a succession of kings from you, David, and that ultimately the Savior of the world, the Messiah, my, my solution to this problem will come from the house of David. You will be the, uh, <coughs> the, the propagator of the family that, that from which the Messiah is, is going to come. That's the second of the covenants that is important in First and Second Kings because what you will see is uh, the, the author explaining why all of this is happening to you, but also showing that that succession in Judah, the kings from David, continues on and continues on and continues on that that prophecy is being fulfilled so so as we study these keep those two in mind now the uh, the, the the fifth covenant well there's actually the if you count the eight the, the, the sixth covenant is the priestly covenant uh, God made a covenant that he was going to take out of the people of Israel, the Levites, and, and create a priesthood. Uh, and then the final covenant is what? The new covenant. In fact, the new covenant being Jesus and the covenant that if you believe in him, you will have eternal life. Uh, is is prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34 uh, and and then uh, uh, told in John 3:16 and now we may think of that as a conditional covenant but it's not conditional there the it is optional meaning you have to choose to believe but once you choose to believe, it is not predicated on anything that you do. God does it all. So it's, it's not conditioned upon your belief. It's predicated upon you choosing the option of that belief, but then it's an unconditional covenant. Now, there is something else introduced into first and second kings we've we've seen it in the old testament and that is we see periodically the prophets that arise we see it with nathan uh, we we see those who speak god's word to the king and the people but prophets take a center stage in first and second king because while the author is describing what's going on between, in, in terms of the relationship of the king and God and the relationship of the people and God, the, uh, the author is also sharing with you that there were prophets who were going to the king and going to the people and telling them that they needed to turn from their ways, that, that their lifestyle their action was the cause of these troubles so we're going to see the introduction uh, the two main prophets that you'll see in first and second king are elijah and elijah 
but we're gonna we're gonna see many prophets. As a matter of fact, I've been looking online to keep all of this straight. There's uh, I, I want to find a timeline chart that that. that <clears throat> tracks the kings of Judah, the kings of Israel, and the prophets of each time so that we can kind of keep an eye or, or keep all of this uh, in order. Let me go back for a moment to those interpretation or those, those issues as it relates to the chronology of kings. I, I said earlier that historically, the dating in First and Second Kings is pretty accurate. But if you were to try to take the period of reigns of all of the kings described in First and Second Kings and add them all together, you come up with more years than the chronology covers. So uh, there are a couple of explanations for that. One is there are apparently uh, several times in the book of Kings that there are what's referred to as co-regencies, meaning that you have a king and that king's son ascends to the kingship in conjunction with the father so that the father and the son are both ruling as king at the same time. And therefore, their reigns overlap. But in counting the years, the author counts from the ascension, whether the other king's still reigning or not, till the end, counts the others from the ascension to the end. So there's some overlap in that. There's also problems uh, from the fact that between during that period of time, calendars changed. There were different calendars being used, different ways of counting years or, or counting the span of the year. Uh, so, so it could well be that, that the change in the counting results in a change in, in the description of the time frame. And, and then lastly, there's the, the way in which the author may count the beginning and ends of years related to uh, when during the year that may have occurred. Uh, uh, in, in other words, if, if, if it's toward the end of a calendar year, the, the, the author may count that beginning with the next calendar year. If it's toward the beginning of a calendar year, he may count it as that calendar year. Yeah. But we know it's accurate. And the reason we know it's accurate is Bible scholars have compared it to the Greek writings, Greek historians, the Assyrian historians, the, and the Babylonian historians. They've taken their non-biblical histories and they've been able to match up the references to reigns of kings in Israel in those non-biblical histories that match up to the reigns of kings as described in first and second, but they also have gone one step further. Besides just trying to match those biblical or non-biblical histories to the uh, to the biblical account in first and second kings, those non-biblical histories also have numerous astronomical references things that were happening astronomically. And so they can take that and work backwards as to when they know these particular events occurred in order to date them to determine then in relationship to those events how do the rest of the dates line up and the most significant of those was what? Eclipse. A solar eclipse <laughs> that was historically recorded in those non-biblical writings that they can trace back to a particular point in time and then from that event they can then relate the other times in those historical writings and relate those back to the scripture and determine the accuracy of the dates in the scriptures. 
We're going to spend some time in First and Second Kings. Uh, we we started this study predicated on the belief that for you to fully understand the New Testament and for you to have any idea of what Revelation's talking about, <laughs> you, you have to understand the history of Israel and understand the prophecies that arise out of the histories of Israel. Um, I'm not going to make a decision now whether we're do first and second chronicles and, and the reason for that is is that first and second chronicles is a repeat of the kings of judah in first and second kings it it doesn't focus on the kings of israel just on the kings of judah and there so we can make that decision when and if we get to the end of Second if Kings. We that long. If we live that long, <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Questions about First and Second Kings. Com comments or, or or things that you uh, would be of particular interest in as we begin our study of First Kings. I can see everybody's fired up. <laughs> Just can't wait to get into the bagats. Uh, <laughs> any, anything else? Boy, you're a quiet bunch this morning. By, by the by, the way, yeah, I, I know I know for some of us memory is an issue, but Easter was last Sunday, and y'all all show up this Sunday. What I think that what really tells us is that as we age, our Easter's are more determined by the rest of the family than they are by us. <laughs> Anything else? If not, Renale, would you close us this morning? Yes. We'll get out of here early. <laughs> Father, we thank you that we could come and worship you today. We thank you for the beautiful weather that you've given us. We thank you for the teaching that you provided for us and the study that he does to go into all this depth of the history and so forth. That, that is just awesome, Lord, and we thank you for him and the time that he puts into your word. We thank you for this church and what it means to us as we uh, travel along our lives and the friends that we've made and the pastors that teach us. And, and Father, just all that you give to us, we just want to give you praise and honor. And we just ask that you go without with us this week, throughout the week, that we might be your children and shine in this world. Father, we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 By, by the way, I went back in my notes, and, and unfortunately I can't find the notes from when we started with the uh, harmony of the Gospels, but we started Acts, in 2015, yeah. So, so we've been nine years of this. My biggest regret is I didn't start this 40 years ago. <laughs> Everybody have a great Sunday. <laughs> He showed up after him. <laughs> you can't get rid of <laughs> you know which way to head, don't you? You know which way to head. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>